checking out a nice grapefruit tree here. This is about 20 years old or so, this tree went in. It's performed pretty well on site. It's had many good fruiting years. However, it is in full sun and is not irrigated very frequently. So we're seeing a little bit of stress. This is one of the indicators that we watch for on citrus when they become desiccated and need more water. We can see how the leaf curls. It'll spindle like this into a cylinder. You can see it curling like that. And this indicates the tree is having some desiccation issues. The tree is not able to uptake water as fast as it's transpiring out of the leaf. So to conserve moisture, the leaf curls in response to that desiccation. We're way out of its normal climate zone. This isn't the tropics. This is the inland chaparral valleys of Southern California, dry, high, arid and therefore a little bit stressful for the citrus. We've got to give them additional water in these marginal environments. This is a classical citrus response to desiccation is this leaf curl. In other trees we might see yellowing or shriveling of a leaf in response to irrigation stress, but especially our tropical trees. When we push them out of their natural environment and push them into these dry chaparral valleys, we find that it's much easier for them to show this desiccation stress. So we've just got to mitigate by adding very intentional irrigation, timely irrigation, to keep the tree out of distress. This is when the desiccation stress becomes more severe than we have tip dieback, where the tree retreats. Again, we see the leaf curl. We can see the, the curling and cupping of the leaf in a desiccation stress. And then that in turn results in tip dieback. We can see about the last 10 inches of this stem has died back. So of course this is stress, desiccation stress. The tree is not getting as much water as it would like. So we've got to put some water out for this tree. I'd say today would be the day. Get the water out and get this tree out of stress because we are showing indications of pullback where this leaf curl stress is resulting in leaf death and stem dieback. This is a more advanced indicator of drought stress for the tree. It's been a couple of weeks since rainfall and so therefore our stress is becoming more pronounced. So about 10 inches of this tip has died back and we have several leading tips that are doing this. This isn't shade out dieback, this isn't underneath the canopy in shade. This is actually drought stress desiccation stress resulting in tip dieback. Once a tip dies back, we know that it's not going to reassert. When, when citrus tips die back, they're done. They're not going to re-sprout, they're not going to reoccur, we're not going to get new vascular circulation out to those tips again. So when those tips die, we need to manicure those back to the next live lateral. So we find our dead tip and we track it down to the next live lateral and we clip it there. And that way we've conserved the tree's energy, focused the tree's energy into the living tissue and taken away what is wicking away the tree's life force. So once we get to this dieback retreat, when the tree has pulled back and tips die, we need to prune those dead structures out of the tree. This is what we're removing from the tree is the dead tissue. We can even feel a little bit of moisture in the end of that stem where we've clipped it off. We can feel the remnant, the residual of living vascular tissue there at their excision point. So by pruning this out, we conserve the tree's energy. All the energy being drawn into this dead tip is then conserved for the living tips. This is the way we focus the tree's energy, conserve the tree's energy, and bring it back to peak health again.